Hi, Paul Coker here from OneBloodyDrop.com. I'm really excited. I'm sitting here in Brighton today with Rachel Hunter Dunn. Uh, Rachel was a, a friend of mine. I met her about three years ago at the Animus Sports Weekend when we were both learning the foundations of how to exercise with diabetes. And Rachel does some uh, incredible open water swims for incredible distances. And today I'll we'll be asking Rachel about how she manages her blood glucose levels during the swim. Thanks for joining us today, no Rachel. Worries. nice and to see you. <laughs> good to see you again. And um, we spoke earlier in a previous video about what you do before a swim. So in this video, I want to talk about strategies that you have during a swim. So is there anything special that you do? Um, we, we spoke earlier that you do different types of swims, so cold water swims are very short, and then you do longer swims in warm water. Um, so how do you actually manage during those long swims? So what I can do is give you an example of uh, what happened in Lanzarote, seeing as yeah. that was my longest swim um, of eight kilometers. Um, so I was wearing my insulin pump because it's waterproof, so I was able to wear it during the swim. and as I mentioned before, reduce the basal rate um, on the pump. And then because we were out for long distances, we had kayak support. So obviously this isn't always the case. You haven't always got someone on a kayak, but um, part of going to Lanzarote for me was to, to work out whether I could do these long swims uh, with diabetes and um, not worry so much about being in the open water. Um, so I did have food um, and um, drink on board the kayak, uh, but I found in the swim I didn't actually want to take on food. You, you don't feel like, I, I personally didn't feel like eating, so I had um, sort of tropical fruit juices, that kind of thing, because you want, you want something. So I tended to take on um, liquid rather than food. Um, but I also tested my um, sugar levels while we were out on the sea. <laughs> um, am I right in thinking that you were doing that with a blood glucose monitor? You weren't using a flash sensor or a CGM? No, I haven't. Um, I don't use CGM or, or a, a flash sensor. So, um, yeah, it was with a, a standard uh, blood sugar meter. So I'd swim up to the kayak and dry my hands, hang on to the, the kayak and um, do my, test my sugar level and then put it all away again in a waterproof bag and then swim off. <laughs> Sounds like you must have had some very calm seas. I can't imagine hanging on to the back no. of a kayak and doing a blood test while the seas are It wasn't that right. calm, to be honest. <laughs> there was one moment where it wasn't really calm at all. <laughs> Nearly had a little meltdown, but yeah, it was. Um, it, it kind of worked, and it just meant that I had peace of mind while I was out there. Um, and I could see at one point that my, my sugar level did drop, so I just took on um, some fruit juice because that's all I really wanted while I was out there. So um, that kind of worked and kept me at a, and I, f I actually finished the 8K with a, with a sugar level of about 8.5. So I was slightly higher than normal, but for me, I was very happy with that. <laughs> you, you know, I've, I've run a lot of half marathons and there have been a really mixed bag of blood glucose levels at the result. Most of them are reasonably within target, but if I'd finished a half marathon at 8.8, .8, I think I'd be so yeah. <laughs> uh, And I think yeah. that you should too. Um, so when, when you're doing an open water long swim like that and you're taking on uh, fruit juices, do you have a rule that you take on fruit juice every 30 minutes or 20 minutes or one an hour? Is there a, a method that you follow? There's no, no method as such. I mean, it was, all, it was all quite trial and error for me. So that particular swim that I did, um, but we stopped every half an hour. So in terms of time, I knew that I had a half an hour window before the next sugar test and feed basically. So I had in my mind that that's all I had to get through. There was one moment where my sugar level did drop, so um, I called the kayak over before the half an hour. So, but it was tricky. What's tricky in the open water is to know um, when you're swimming and it's slightly rough, whether you feel slightly queasy because of the waves or whether it's because you've got a low sugar level. That was tricky for me. So it's better to just check and then you know. <laughs> um, but I had amazing support and that's what you need, um, yeah. So if you were doing a, an open water swim, perhaps not not the long distance, but if you're doing an open water swim and you haven't got kayak support, how do you then carry your pump? How do you carry your glucose supplies? 
Well, I wear my pump um, strapped to my costume and um, I have, you can have a sort of toe float, so um, a sort of a luminous toe float that you can put your stuff into, wrap it up and then it becomes waterproof and then you sort of swim with it around your waist and it, it follows you. So it's close to you, so you can, you can use that. Um, but I don't tend to, so at the moment, you know, just if I'm going out swimming, I tend to go in a group. Most people that I go out with know that I'm diabetic or I'm, I'm not that far away. So swimming in Brighton, for example, I'm not that far away from the shore. Don't tend to go out that way. Although we are going to do a wind farm swim, <laughs> which is over there. Can you see the wind farm? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think for me it's peace of mind knowing that if I'm swimming along the coast, I can always get in and and you know sort myself out if I need to. Yeah, um, but or just wear a tow float because that's really handy. To, then it's on you. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Rachel. You've given us some really good uh, and important tips there, and I, I think that the, what you are actually sharing with us is that diabetes isn't going to stop you and it shouldn't stop any of us from participating in whatever sport we decide to choose. Yeah, absolutely. Just go for it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. No worries. So if you've got any comments or questions for either me or Rachel, then please leave them in the comments below and we will come back to you with answers. And subscribe to the channel below and we'll see you on the next video when I'll be talking to Rachel about how she manages her blood glucose levels after a long swim.